Welcome to Elite Weather. My name is Mr. G. You are a meteorologist today. Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you had a safe commute into school and work today. And we're going to be talking about that weather forecast for the beginning of this work week until about the midweek point. We're going to be focusing on another cross-country storm that is moving out of the Pacific Northwest and the Rockies that will affect the Plains, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast, and folks down in the South as well in the Southern Plains. Uh, today we are outside at the city of Boston on uh, this cloudy and wet day in the Northeast and New England. The Boston Marathon is currently underway right now. The runners are out there and they are contending with these cloudy and dreary skies. Temperatures are in the mid-50s right now and they are having those scattered showers across the Boston area from our storm that's advancing out of the Midwest and the Great Lakes. So it's spreading those showers out that way as well. So let's take a look at our national radar as we talk about what we're going to be seeing there. Uh, we, as, as we talk about what we are seeing across the country and in the Northeast. Okay, here we are as we look at our radar map right now. We have that big area of low pressure across the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes, that circulation right there over Michigan and Wisconsin and the uh, Lake Michigan right there. So we're seeing that rain a bit to the east here and we have our cold air with that snow through parts of Wisconsin and northern Michigan right now. So the upper peninsula to the west here toward the arrowhead of Minnesota, we're seeing that snow. Some of it can be heavy at times and that snow is extending into Wisconsin and we're seeing snow through parts of northern Illinois and northern uh, Iowa as well. Southern Wisconsin, southwestern Wisconsin, we're seeing that snow but it's a little bit warmer to the east here as our frontal boundary in the here is about right in this region so we're seeing uh, our cyclogenesis, our deformation band providing that snow but we're seeing some showers and, and some is isolated thunder as well in embedded in some of those rain showers here to the east. So near the Detroit area and Cleveland, we're seeing some showers today. And in the northeast is where Boston is. We're seeing those showers with our marathon runners out there for the Boston Marathon. Now this is going to be circulating and rotating through the northeast and into the New England for the remainder of the day. We're going to see the precipitation begin to diminish out over the northern plains. Well, not necessarily the northern plains, but the upper Mississippi River Valley, northern Minnesota. We're going to see those showers begin to shift on off to the east this afternoon, as well as through Wisconsin. So by the evening hours, this will all diminish and shift to the east and into Michigan and southern Canada. So Ontario eventually is going to pick up some of those snow showers later today and into the nighttime hours tonight. So that is our big area of precipitation right now. Let's move on with the rest of the forecast as we talk about that storm that's going to be making that track from the Pacific Northwest to the Northeast by the end of the week. All right, now it's time to talk about the rest of the weather forecast as we take a look at our maps and discuss what's going on today. This is our current set, set scenario that we're looking at on the east, and this is our main area of low pressure up here over the Great Lakes. We're looking at it over northern Michigan and southern Ontario, Canada. We have an occluded front right here, and then here's a secondary area of low pressure just off the coast of New Jersey and up in New York. So we're looking at our secondary weaker low here and that's going to be providing more rain showers over that way and maybe some thunder out there over the Atlantic. We're looking at some thunderstorms out over the ocean just off the coast there. But those, those light showers are going to continue through New England this afternoon and into the evening hours we're going to see this start to work through and begin to diminish. But right now as we're here in Boston where the Boston Marathon is currently underway we're seeing 
seeing some showers, some scattered showers. Now, it's not going to rain the entire time through the race, but we are dealing with some scattered showers out there. And then over to the west here, across the uh, southern Ontario, Canada, as well as through Wisconsin and Michigan, we're seeing our cold air filtering down out of Canada. And here's our deformation band here that's providing that snow through the upper Mississippi River Valley. And we're seeing that snow into parts of Michigan, Detroit, as well as down towards um, portions of Indiana and northern Illinois. So the Chicago area, uh, South Bend, as well as northern Ont northern Ohio. So Cleveland is right there. We're going to be seeing a rain and snow mix and a little bit of snow there towards the northwestern Ohio. So um, some wintry, per per wintry precipitation once again from another storm late into the season. We're seeing snow still as we get later into the season. Now as time prevails, we're going to be seeing less and less snow with these storm systems across the Great Lakes and the upper Midwest as, such, as conditions warm overall throughout the uh, entire column of the atmosphere and from the northern latitudes down further to the southern latitudes as our sun angles get higher in the sky as the earth continues its tilt toward the center here as summer begins to head towards the northern hemisphere. So we're going to be seeing that snow naturally decrease in frequency across the northern tier of the United States. And here is what we're going to be looking at as far as winter weather uh, advisories or phenomena today. And we have a winter storm watch here through central Wisconsin and western Wisconsin. So Dubuque, Iowa, all the way through uh, Richmond Center and up to Wausau and Rylander, we're going to be seeing that uh, winter storm warning in place. And we have a winter weather advisory to the west here along near the Minnesota border, Menominee, east of Minneapolis. We're going to be seeing a winter weather advisory here. And we have winter weather in eastern Iowa near the Quad Cities and Dubuque, Dubuque and northwestern Illinois. We see our winter weather advisory. Now, there is a blizzard warning in effect right along Lake Superior. And you know, Lake Superior is... is <laughs> There I go. I always have to cough when I do the YouTube video. It's not going to be a good video unless I cough. And here we are. We have a, a small blizzard watch in place, a warning through parts of far northern Wisconsin here. So right here, we have Ironwood and Superior. We have our wizard our blizzard watch or warning in place and that's going to be there until about three o'clock this afternoon we're going to be seeing that blizzard warning in place across northern wisconsin far northern is a very small area a very small area could experience blizzard conditions today and here is a look at our five o'clock afternoon uh future cast for the satellite and everything and we're going to be seeing those snow showers through Michigan and through the Northwest. This is going to be a rain and snow mix there from Chicago through Indiana and into Ohio. It eventually will become all rain as it moves through central and eastern Ohio and into Pennsylvania and southwestern New York. But Wisconsin, we're going to continue to see those that uh, steady snow become more showery and we're going to be seeing more showers of snow through parts of Michigan as well. So Detroit might be on that border of that rain and snow line, but as you go further inland into Detroit, I mean into Michigan and to the north, we're going to see more snow and that snow will become steadier as well. So more snow to continue into the evening hours today and we're going to see that snow uh, diminish as we head into the tomorrow, tomorrow morning. So about 8 a.m., this is what we could be seeing out across the Great Lakes and into the northeast. We're going to be seeing the conditions finally start to dry up across Wisconsin and northern Illinois, Indiana, and northern Ohio as well. A few snow showers, a snow, uh, I can't talk today. A few flurries and light snow showers will continue in the morning. Oh, let me get into the video. A few snow showers and flurries will continue across 
parts of Ohio, northeastern and eastern Ohio, near Pittsburgh. We might see in Pennsylvania a few snow showers in the morning hours as well. Rain to the east over here, parts of New York, eastern Pennsylvania near Allentown. We're going to see those rain showers and a few rain showers here through central New York and some snow mixed in as well. A rain shower over there here in New Hampshire and Vermont, maybe in Maine might pick up a rain shower and Boston might pick up a stray rain shower in the morning as well. Now here we are as we look at the uh, Europe tomorrow night into the Northeast and the Great Lakes. Dry weather will take place across the most of Michigan. We'll see things continue to improve. Some clouds will begin to filter in from the west there through Wisconsin and Minnesota. We're going to see increasing clouds as the next storm system starts to make an appearance into the Midwest and the upper Midwest this week, uh, later this week. Here's those rich snow showers. We're going to see in far northern Pennsylvania and New York. Now, this here is going to have a lake effect component to it. So, we will see uh, increase in the amount of snow here near Buffalo, off of Lake Erie, Lake Ontario as well. We're going to be seeing some snow here near Watertown, New York. So, an increase in the snow because of the lake effect through southwestern New York and north central New York off of the lake. So uh, if you're in those regions, expect uh, a bit of a burst of snow tomorrow as well as we head into the evening hours. And again, for the most part, uh, near Boston and Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, conditions will begin to settle down quite a bit. There might be a, spray, a stray shower here and there, but for the most part, conditions will start to dry out in the northeast tomorrow uh, afternoon and evening all right so our storm will also our next storm that's incoming will also have some severe weather to talk about so now these storms we're not seeing the severe weather that we saw a few weeks ago or maybe a month ago with those out large outbreaks but we are looking at the possibility of some isolated to scattered severe thunderstorms we don't have as much cold air to work with with these storms, so the instability is not going to quite be there with this next storm system, which is a good thing. We will have a dry line across western Oklahoma and west central Texas here, so we will see dry line thunderstorms. And what's unique about dry line thunderstorms is they tend to be elevated, so we're going to be seeing some uh, elevated thunderstorms, so low precipitation generally, low pre low uh, we call them LP. SW low precipitation no low precipitation supercells so we will see some of those spring up here across west central Texas as we head through the middle part of the week like on Wednesday and into West uh, Oklahoma as well I'm really having troubles with my words today I feel like I've been drinking but anyway I'm going to keep moving here as you move further to the north we have our area of low pressure right there that's going to be over Kansas coming out of the Rockies and Colorado here there is our cold front our stationary front will be there and we have a secondary front extending to the north we will have a warm front that's coming up out from the south here so this warm front here will bring some showers to parts of Iowa and Illinois but we could see more consistent severe thunderstorms right in this area right here we kind of have sort of a triple point developing here where we have our warm front conversion with our cold front coming up from the south that's going to create a lot of wind shear because we're going to see uh, winds coming from the southeast right along this warm front and winds coming from the southwest out ahead of this front right here and our area of low pressure our low will pr produce some twisting in the atmosphere so if we see any tornadoes parts of Kansas will be uh, in central Kansas will be the best location for those tornadoes to develop if any will develop but we're going to see those severe thunderstorms concentrate more across Iowa and northwestern Missouri and southeastern Kansas right at our triple point in this region right here I'm getting a little bit technical with this but you know some of you guys know me and you know how we roll so anyway so as our as we move into Wednesday now, this storm is slow moving. It's not 
having that cold air behind it to push it right up that force that front right on through so this one lacks the dynamics for a large outbreak for severe weather but we will see enough for some severe weather and we're going to be seeing that severe weather again we have our area of low pressure our dry line down here through uh, Texas and into uh, Kansas well we see our dry line that's going to set up over eastern Colorado. This is Kansas right here. That dry line drops south through Oklahoma and through north central Texas. And near our dry line, we're going to see our severe weather set up right in this region right here where we're going to have the wind shear and the dynamics for supercell thunderstorms. So we're going to be seeing those storms produce that heavy rain and large hail damaging winds with frequent lightning as well. So that is what we're going to be seeing on Wednesday. On Thursday, our severe weather threat moves a bit to the Ozarks, not a bit to the Ozarks, it moves to the Ozarks. So we're looking at southern Missouri, Arkansas, most of Arkansas, uh, southeastern Oklahoma, northeastern Texas. This is near Dallas, Fort Worth, eastward through Little Rock, Arkansas, south of Kansas City, Missouri. We're going to be seeing our potential for some severe weather. This is going to be isolated to scattered severe thunderstorms. Tornadoes are not going to be a concern with this event, but an isolated weaker tornado is always possible when you have uh, severe thunderstorms. I always indicate that in every forecast because even though I don't expect the tornado, I don't want to be surprised. I don't want people to say, hey, you didn't say we was going to see a tornado, but yeah, I like to keep you prepared. Okay, so on Friday, our slow-moving storm, again, keeps that severe weather through Mississippi right here. Here is Louisiana, southeastern Arkansas, so uh, Greenville, Mississippi, uh, Louisville, uh, Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, um, Monroe, Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, you get into my stomping, Alexandria, boy, this is all my stomping grounds where my family comes from down there across the dirty south. So anyway, so East Texas as well, um, east of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, um, this is going to be our focal point for severe thunderstorms on Friday. Again, we're going to see only a possible, this is a marginal to slight risk for severe weather uh, per the National Weather Service uh, standards that they issue severe weather alerts for. And we think that we're going to be only seeing isolated to scattered severe thunderstorms. Tornadoes are not expected, but don't be surprised if we see at least one or weak one. But damaging winds, large hail, and heavy rain with some torrential downpours are going to be expected with this severe weather threat. And here is a look at what we're going to be seeing Wednesday morning as we have rain showers and some thunderstorms that we're going to be seeing through the upper midwest so uh here is in iowa we're going to be seeing our area of low pressure coming through there and we're going to be seeing those rain showers there along the wisconsin border and as well as into minnesota so western minnesota iowa and uh northeastern nebraska omaha on over to the chicago area you have De Des Moines here, uh, the Quad Cities, northwestern Illinois. We're going to be seeing those showers and thunderstorms. Maybe some snowflakes are going to fall over here in Colorado, Wyoming as well. We'll see our wintry weather over that way across the Rockies and the high plains of Wyoming and Montana. Some scattered snow showers and those rain showers will extend up through the Dakotas as well. And as we get to Thursday, 8 a.m. Thursday, 24 hours later from your Wednesday morning. So we can see those showers and thunderstorms moving through Oklahoma. So Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and it's going to eventually uh, extend into Kansas, Coffeeville, Kansas, Kansas, Lawrence, Kansas. Going to see those showers and thunderstorms move through. Tornadoes are not going to be a priority with this storm system, but heavy rain and some damaging winds and some hail is going to be possible. The showers will be more showerly down here in showery in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and over into Shreveport. We're going to see a line of showers and thunderstorms develop over northern Illinois, northern Louisiana, <laughs> eastern East Texas, central Arkansas, through Little Rock, we're going to see a line of 
uh, strong showers and thunderstorms. I don't expect severe in the morning, but later in the day, we can see that severe thunderstorm threat increase across the Ozarks here through uh, Arkansas. So uh, eastern Oklahoma, Arkansas, southern Missouri, northern Illinois, northern Louisiana, northeastern Texas, we're going to see that threat for severe thunderstorms in the afternoon, okay? Now, Friday at 7 a.m., it gets a little bit more juicy out there because we get that storm system moves to a position which allows it to draw in more moisture off of the Gulf of Mexico. So we're going to see that warm, moist air come from the south along the Gulf. So Louisiana, East Texas, Mississippi, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Western Alabama. We're going to be seeing our potential there for heavy rains. We're going to see the potential for excessive rainfall. So several inches of rain is going to be possible. We're going to see severe thunderstorms, heavy rain with large hail, damaging winds, an isolated tornado. It's going to be more likely, especially in this white outline right in here, is where a tornado will be more likely with this scenario that we are going to see Friday morning. We're going to start to see it Friday morning in the afternoon. That severe weather threat is going to shift a little bit to the east and northeast a little bit. So eastern Tennessee, uh, Alabama, and eastern Kentucky, uh, western North Carolina, northeastern South, northwestern uh, South Carolina, we're going to see that severe weather threat shift into those areas late in the day and into the nighttime hour. So we're going to start to see um, 10 p.m. We're going to see those thunderstorms continuing over across the deep south. So the lower Mississippi River Valley, the Mississippi River is right there. All right. Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama, Kentucky, and Missouri. We're going to be seeing that potential there for that heavy rain to continue. Some excessive rainfall will be possible here. Central Tennessee, northwestern Alabama, northern Mississippi, eastern Louisiana, eastern Arkansas, where we can see very heavy rain. Maybe some flash flooding could be possible. Tornadoes, isolated tornadoes large hail, damaging winds once again, but a lot of this is going to be uh, isolated to scattered as far as the severe component is concerned. But we will see general showers and thunderstorms over a widespread area across the deep south and to the mid-south and Appalachia. So we will be dealing with those severe thunderstorms as we get toward the upcoming weekend. Now here we are, so we take a big picture look at this week. We have our current storm system over the Great Lakes and the Northeast. The low pressure is going to move into southern Canada. So Quebec and to uh, Ontario, Canada, we're going to be seeing that rain through Toronto, Montreal, but we will see the snow over Quebec and the northern provinces of eastern Canada, the, the French-speaking areas of Canada. All right? That snow will be uh, focusing across the parts of Wisconsin and to Michigan, but we're going to see rain to the east there through the northeast and the mid-Atlantic states. Dry across the southeast. Dry, look at that area of high pressure here. That is going to keep a nice air, a nice weather, fair weather across this region right here. It's going to be a little bit cool across the southeast because we have this area of low pressure and it's pulling that colder air down from Canada and it's filtering in behind our advancing cold front and some of the air is getting diverted around our area of high pressure down all along the Gulf Coast so that when divergence here we have some divergence in the atmosphere so that's going to make it a little bit cooler across the southeast today and earlier this week warmer across the southwest because we have what is recalled what is called return flow and that return flow is the flow coming around the backside of this high pressure and it's bringing some moisture and warm temperatures off of mexico so a little bit of moisture off the gulf and warmth off the um, uh, land mass of old mexico is going to combine to make conditions really nice 
temperature-wise across Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, North and South Dakota, Nebraska, the plains as well of Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. So the eastern side of the Rockies are going to experience some snow melt and some warming temperatures because of return flow off of this area of high pressure. And we have an advancing storm system coming from the northwest, and that is going to create southwesterly air coming up, warm air advection coming up off of the southwest. So the Pacific air is going to be circling into this storm as well. So we're going to see uh, several things combined to make for some really pleasant temperatures across the, the high plains coming up off of the Rockies and um, the Pacific Northwest after um, the wet weather we're going to continue to see along the coast and the Cascades. You have the spine of the Cascade Mountains. To the west of the Cascade Mountains, it's going to remain cold and wet and dreary. That wet weather will continue, but to the west, to the east of the Cascade, across the plains of northern Washington and Oregon and Idaho, we're going to see temperatures improve, warm up, and some dry weather take place as well. So we're going to melt a lot of snow across the northern Rockies as we have that warmer air, but it's going to remain cool west of the Cascades, okay? I know that just got a little bit technical for some folks, but hey, I'm the man. I'm not, I know my business here. So we're going to keep it pushing here as we have the next storm that's going to replace this guy later in the week with some snow and severe weather. Now, we'll have to say we won't see as much snow with this next storm coming up as we saw across with this storm. Here's what we're going to be seeing this afternoon. Temperatures in the 60s, lower 70s across the eastern and the southeast. So the mid-Atlantic, so uh, from Baltimore down through Myrtle Beach, Charlotte here, uh, Orlando, look at those temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, mid 70s there in Florida, Destin, Augusta, Georgia, Atlanta, we'll see those temperatures in the lower 60s. Look at those 60s there near Nashville. See how it's cooler today? It's not as warm as it could be because they are basking in that flow around that barclinic zone around our area of low pressure over to the north. So that's going to funnel in cooler temperatures. Now with higher sun angles across the southeast and the effects of the Appalachian Mountain Range, we are what this is what's going to happen is we have cooler air damming along the front side of the Appalachian Mountains. So that cool air is not going to go over the top of the mountains, but it's going to kind of jam and pool up in, uh, in front of the western side of the mountains. But on the leeward side of the mountains, we have a little bit more freedom and we're going to have a little bit more warmer air to work with. So temperatures will at least hit the low to middle 70s along the eastern side of the Appalachian Mountain Range. Over to the west, look at the beautiful dry weather across the central plains, that area of high pressure right there, keeping things nice and calm for you folks out there. You're not even dealing with a bunch of wind across the plains this time. So that's beautiful. Now let's go on and talk about uh, Monday as far as temperatures is concerned this afternoon. We're going to be looking at our high pressure along the Gulf of Mexico and that is going to feed up a nice flow from the south here. We see that nice flow coming up around the south side of our area of high pressure in this direction here. So we're going to see southeast, south to southwesterly winds coming to the central and northern plains. Temperatures will hit in the 80s. Look at that 81 in Des Moines today, 82 in Wichita, 81 in Dallas, 79 in San Antonio, 77 down there in Houston. And that is because it's cooler here because of the water. The water keeps the temperatures a little bit, the air is a little bit more moist down here. So it's not going to get as warm as where it's still a little bit more drier. But we are seeing, going to start to see that dew point and moisture at the surface began to expand its way northward as our advancing storm system from the west makes it into the central and southern plains. Now, as we take a look at the Pacific Northwest, I'm going to stand over here so we can look at all the beautiful temperatures that we're looking at out there. Look at the 72 in Denver, uh, Casper, Wyoming. We have 
a temperature of 84 degrees. So, uh, am I seeing that right? No, it might be 66. My vision is not good, folks. I, I'm visually impaired, so we work with what we can do. All right, so we are dealing with the 79 in Albuquerque. So, we are looking at temperatures starting to warm up across the southwest as well. That's 65 in Flagstaff. Now, we all know that Flagstaff is kind of high up in the mountains a little bit, about 5,000 feet. So, uh, 4,000 feet is where Flagstaff is across the Mugion Rim. Las Vegas, 84 today. So, we're starting to see that temperature across the Rockies, the Southern Rockies, as well as the Desert Southwest start to warm up and down there across the deserts of West Texas and Eastern um, Eastern. Uh, What's the name of the state right here? <laughs> Eastern New Mexico. <laughs> uh, I tell you, so we have that warming across the desert southwest. But remember, we have that, uh, another cold front right here. Another frontal boundary right here. Central California through central Nevada, northern Utah, Idaho, and through Montana. And right along the border there with, uh, with Wyoming. So you see our warm temperatures. To the east here, this is that warmer along the leeward side of the Rocky Mountains. So we have air coming over the mountains, and we have what's called compressional heating. That air drops down, high pressure aloft, it sinks, compresses that air. You squeeze that air, you squeeze anything, it gets harder or warmer. So that's what we're seeing, compressional heating across the northern the the high plains along the leeward side of the Rocky Mountains. And we have our pool of colder air trapped here to the west of this frontal boundary. And then we have another frontal boundary right along the coast there. And we have our moisture trap, our pool of moisture here. Thunderstorms is also included because it's a really cold, much colder air along this front. So we have our cool air here, cold air there so we got a warm air cool air and cold air so we have three different frontal boundaries that's going to be advancing from the northwest this week cold front we have our occluded front right there and then an area of flow pressure there off the coast of the pacific northwest i said today was going to be a elevated forecast so we have our high our low pressure that's going to position itself over there near Wyoming and Montana and uh, North and South Dakota. We're going to see our triple point set up there. We're going to see our cold front here across the Rockies, so Colorado and into Utah, Central Utah. We're going to see our cold front extend there. Uh, snow is going to start to billow in on the backside of this low pressure. Thunderstorms will start to form out ahead of our low. We have our warm front lifted up to the north, bringing that warm air from the south. This is that leading edge of that warm air coming up from the desert southwest and off of old Mexico and some air from the Gulf of Mexico. So whatever little moisture filters into this air can spark a thunderstorm over here across the central and northern plains as we head through the midweek part. But it's just the, the show before the show. So that's, we could see some teaser thunderstorms out here across the plains on Tuesday. And then on Tuesday, we start to look at our uh, heat situation further develop here across the plains where we see those 70s make it all the way up into North Dakota. Look at that. Look at that 64 up in Bismarck. But check out the 76 in Omaha. I don't have the 72 in Sioux Falls. And we're going to be seeing Look at our warm front right there. Our warm front is just north of Omaha. We look how it goes from 64 in Bismarck, but the 76 right here in Omaha, 86 in Wichita, uh, 89 in Amarillo. So it starts to get downright hot as you head over toward the southwest here. So western Oklahoma, northwestern and western Texas is going to get downright hot. It's going to stay a little bit on the cooler side, Dallas southward, uh, because of moisture and thunderstorms that's going to be in place. So we're going to have cooler because of clouds 
and rain in the area. So we're going to have rain, cool air over Dallas, Houston, and along the Gulf Coast. But areas where it's not going to be raining, we're going to see those temperatures uh, bump up into the 80s. So that is really interesting. Now, here we are as we take a look at Tuesday again. Another look at Tuesday as we move further to the east. I told you this is going to be detailed. This is a well weather forecast here. This is for the weather fans, all right? This is not the casual people here. This is the weather fans here. So now we're looking at the eastern U.S. We're going to start to see that pool of cold air along the Appalachian Mountain Range finally get shunted off to the north. That's going to get booted on out of here, and hence the cooler air across the northeast. That's that air that was over the Appalachian Mountain Range that was trapped on the western side. Remember when I said that cold air behind that last storm? That's getting shunted off to the north and east because we have our warm front that actually extends all the way off the Atlantic coast. It doesn't just stop there. This is just as far as I depicted it. Because I gotta draw all these maps now. And I couldn't I didn't want to deal with making it all the way connected. But it actually connects to this other low out here over the Atlantic. And we're gonna be looking at temperatures in the 60s in the northeast, 70s in the mid-Atlantic, 80s down the southeast. So we're looking at our warm air advection starting to uh, filter in across the east. But look at that warm air invention across the plains on Tuesday. This is our mid to upper 80s. These are temperatures near 90s as well as moisture coming up off of the Gulf of Mexico. This is going to be fuel for those severe thunderstorms that we're going to be seeing as we head on through the middle part of the week. So that is the weather forecast. Again, another storm that's going to be moving across the plains with some severe weather. Not an outbreak by any stretch of the imagination, but something to look at, some severe thunderstorms. You may have a, a tornado or two. I'm not to say I'm not going to say a tornado is not possible, but it's not likely, but it's possible. So again, that was your weather forecast. I hope you guys all enjoyed that because I enjoyed giving that weather forecast. My name is Mr. G. You're a student meteorologist. I am a student at Mississippi State University online. So I do an online meteorology program. But thanks for watching me today, guys. And I've been studying the weather way before I've been doing it officially in college. I've been a weather person since I was a kid, okay? I knew more about the weather as a child than most adults do in their whole lifetime. So, but anyway, thank you for watching me today as I'm all juiced up right now. Leave a like, comment, and feel free to subscribe because I'm really trying to blow this thing. If I was cuter, maybe I could have a million subscribers. If I was a girl, I would probably be blowing up on YouTube. But when you're not a girl, it's, boy, it's hard, especially if you're a brother. God damn, it's hard. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I will finish fooling around here and go on and finish my homework. So you guys have a good day. I will see you guys all tomorrow in tomorrow's video. Bye-bye.